Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries, and today I'm going to share how I gave this hallway a makeover with a built-in storage vent and some decorative trim on the walls. This was a pretty simple and fun way to add some custom touches to an otherwise basic space. So if you're ready to see how it all came together, let's go. This video was sponsored by The Home Depot as part of the Prospective program. Keep an eye out for some awesome new tools that I'll be using throughout the video to bring this project to life. This hallway had a few things going on. It had two small closets and an exterior door that goes out to the porch. While you may have figured out from a few of my previous videos that I'm not too fond of closets and doors, these particular closets I kind of needed to keep because it's where I keep my crafting and sewing supplies. The previous homeowners had set up the space between the closets as a desk area, but we didn't use it, so I wanted to rework this space into something a bit more attractive and functional for us. So first thing was first, I began removing everything from the space. The desktop was one of those prefabbed hardwood butcher blocks, so while the color was a little bit too dark for me, I did save it to sand it down and use it for the bench top later. I removed all the baseboards and the door trim and salvaged some of the door trim pieces to use later, but they definitely needed some sanding first. And then I patched several holes and uneven spots in the drywall to get it ready for paint. Speaking of paint, I then removed the closet doors to take out to the shop to paint them black. It's also much easier to trim out doors when they're not attached to the frame, so there were a couple reasons for taking them off. With everything out of the way and the wall sanded nice and smooth, I painted the walls a bright white. I'm slowly making my way around this new house painting everything white to brighten it up, but painting is not my favorite, so it's kind of taking a while. Once the hallway was painted, it was time to retrim everything. I shared a video recently about how I trim out my windows and doors, and since I detailed it in that video, I won't go into great detail again here, but basically for the three doors, I trim the sides and tops with 1x4s and finish nails. I reused what I could from the old trim after sanding it down, but I did cut some new pieces for a couple places where I needed a slightly wider board due to the odd spacing at the corners. Because with trim, you're usually cutting to fit, so I find myself walking back and forth to and from the shop multiple times to cut just a little more off for each piece, which takes forever. After doing this for my bathroom remodel, I decided a cordless miter saw was a must-have for my next trim project. So I set up my new Ryobi One Plus 7.25 inch sliding compound miter saw right outside on the porch to save me some time and a hundred trips across the backyard to the shop. To dress up my door trim, I usually like to add crown molding to the tops, but this saw was a little too small to cut it my usual way, so here's how I cut it laying flat. I need to cut some crown molding for the top of the door trim to dress it up a little bit. When I showed you my window trim video, I showed you how I cut crown molding up like this on my big miter saw in the shop. However, this is quite a bit smaller and it's too small to cut it standing up like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it laying flat. So there are some magic numbers for cutting crown molding flat. And the first magic number here is 31.6, which is actually marked specifically here on the miter gauge. So I'm going to adjust my miter to 31.6. Then I need to bevel to 33.9, which is marked right here as well on this little red line. This worked perfectly. And actually I think cutting crown laying flat may be easier than cutting it standing up. It's nice that these angles are already marked on the gauges, so I don't have to remember them. But you do need to pay close attention to the direction of the cut and swap mitering to the left or the right as needed based on whether you're cutting an inside or an outside corner. After the crown was cut, I swapped from the finish nailer to the Ryobi Airstrike 18 gauge brad nailer. 
I'll talk a little bit more about this nailer later in the video, but I swapped over to brad nails because they're a little smaller and are less likely to split delicate pieces like the crown molding that I'm adding here around the tops and the half round molding I installed below it to hide the trim seams. For more details on installing door and window trim, check out my more in-depth video on that that I will link in the description. Like with any trim, I puttied, caulked, and painted it, and while all of that was drying, I moved on to building the bench. Now, there are a million ways to build built-in benches. You could build it in multiple pieces or frame out the whole thing in place with 2x4s, but you know how I love a simple plywood project, so I just built one large cabinet-style bench from a sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood. I wanted the storage bench to be as open as possible, so I didn't really want a divider in here or to take up a lot of space with like big bulky framing. And I wanted the top to simply lift up to access below. So I cut a front, a bottom, two sides, and some bracing strips for the back to assemble a large box slightly smaller than the overall opening so that it could simply slide into place. I'll detail the dimensions and how to modify them to fit your particular space in the plans linked in the description, but I made this box about 18 and a half inches tall and 21 inches deep overall. I only edge banded the top of the front piece since it will be the only exposed plywood edge, and then I assembled the bench together using pocket holes and screws. Similar to how you'd build a basic cabinet, I installed two strips across the top back corner one to be used to secure the top later, and one to be used to secure the box to the wall studs. And in this case, I did add another strip at the bottom, basically just because the drywall back there was in pretty rough shape after removing the baseboards and I just wanted to cover it up. I didn't add a back panel here because there were several outlets behind the bench and I didn't want to cut out holes for all of them. But if you wanted, you could certainly add a quarter inch plywood back panel. Because I was adding a flip top style seat, I didn't want to run a full strip across the top at the front, but I needed something at the sides to be able to secure the seat top. So I added some scrap pieces here using pocket holes and screws. Then I carried it inside and slid this bench into place. The outside corners on the walls were a little out of square, so in order for this bench to fit past them into place, I had to make the box a little undersized, so there are some gaps on the side once I scooted it all the way back. That's okay, I covered these gaps later with some cove molding, which you will see. I mismeasured and ended up having to notch out some of my back supports to fit around the outlets but I was still able to secure this piece into three wall studs and also I secured each side of the bench into wall studs as well using shims to fill the gap. I wanted this bench to blend into the wall so I actually painted it the same color as the wall and didn't bother going all the way to the floor because I'm gonna cover that with baseboard later. While the paint dried, I headed to the shop to work on the bench top. I reused the butcher block top from the desk, but I sanded all of the old finish and dark stain off because I wanted to keep it a natural lighter color. However, I didn't need this to be one solid piece because I wanted it to flip open to access the storage below. So I drew out a section about 8 inches in from each edge and about 3 inches in from the back edge and I used a circular saw to cut out this middle section. This will be the flip top lid. Because I wanted to allow the wood to move, I used a large drill bit to drill out some oversized holes around the top of the bench through the supports. Then I used screws with washers through the holes to secure the stationary portion of the top. At this point, things got a little out of order, so bear with me. By this time, I had finished painting the doors black, so I hung them back up so you don't have to look at all the mess inside my closets here anymore. And I also replaced the door handles with these matte black handles and started to cut all of my baseboard pieces. 
I used one by sixes for the baseboards and I got them all cut to fit, labeled them, then took them out to paint. After they were painted, I brought them back in and nailed them in place. Now things were almost done, but I really wanted to dress up this hallway a little more. I've been wanting to add a wall treatment somewhere in the house for a while, but I didn't want anything huge. This little nook seemed like the perfect spot since it was small and it had a nice three-sided space to kind of play with as far as design goes. So I used some base cap molding for this and basically laid out boxes to add to the wall. Taller ones on the bottom and shorter, smaller boxes at the top. I cut all my pieces with 45 degree mitered ends so that they'd meet up nicely at the corners. So two quick notes. Using a one by four as a spacer block here, keep my spacing consistent. These are not going to be all on a stud. So because I can't nail into the stud and I can just nail into the drywall and that's not gonna hold, I'm gonna use the construction adhesive to hold it in place for the long term, but while it dries, I'm gonna use my 18 gauge nailer again. Because I do have wires behind here, there's an outlet. I actually tried at first to use painter's tape, but since these are freshly painted walls, I was a little afraid to tape it to securely because I didn't want when I peeled the tape off for the paint to peel off with the tape. So I think honestly, nails are the best option here as long as they are not too long that they'll go through this, through the drywall, and then into the back cavity because obviously you don't want to get into anything that's back behind your drywall. So I have um, one inch nails, it's half inch drywall, and then these are a little over half an inch thick. So this should be fine. Um, so here we go. This Ryobi OnePlus HP brushless 18 gauge brad nailer is a great option for this as it's capable of shooting the shorter nails that I need for this and it has a depth adjustment setting so that I can make sure my nail shoots just right below the trim surface that way it won't go through the drywall and it also makes puttying over the holes easier later as well. As a side note, I've been using the older version of the 18 gauge airstrike for several years now and I have loved it. You can see it in tons of my previous videos. So if you're curious what's different with the new HP brushless version of this nailer, it has a much quicker response time. The older version tends to pause a little between pulling the trigger and the nail actually releasing. This one is immediate. It delivers 60% more power than the older version and the nose is designed much easier to see where the nail will hit so your placement is a lot more accurate. If you want to check it out for yourself, I will leave a link to it in the description below. I work my way around the walls installing the trim with the adhesive and the brad nails and using my scrap 1x4 as a spacer. After everything was up, I puttied over the nail holes and caulked all of the edges and corners of both the wall trim and the baseboards. And finally, all that was left was some paint touch-ups and installing the flip top for the bench. I used some butt hinges for the top and installed these kind of backwards, but it actually ended up working well. I screwed the hinges to the stationary part of the seat first. Then when I placed the flip top piece in, I realized that it was going to be really hard to screw the other side of the hinge in from that angle. So I marked where the hinges went, took the flip top back out, then removed the hinges to install them on the flip top side first where I made my marks. Then, since the holes were already drilled out on the stationary part of the seat, this was really easy to just replace right back where it should go. I gave the bench seat three coats of clear coat poly and painted the wall trim after putty and caulk had dried. And I also forgot to mention that I did nail some small pieces of cove molding here at the bench corners to cover up the gaps on the sides. I painted these as well so they blended right in and now the hallway looks like a brand new space. <laughs> I really want to hang some plants or some artwork here on the walls but I'm super indecisive and I have not had time to think much about what I really want so for now I'm keeping it minimal and simple. 
Even as is, I like the extra detail here and the custom feel of this space. This bench will be a great place to store all of my craft fabrics and supplies and also a great little hangout to sit and work on my laptop or just read a book. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this transformation and enjoyed seeing how the built-in bench and wall treatment came together. I've got tons more projects and plans to share with you soon, so if you'd like to keep up to date with all the latest videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching, friends, and until next time, happy building!